So we are in Kochi Prefecture, <coughs> which is the hometown of John Manjiro, which if you don't know who he is, I'm going to tell you a little story. So, a long time ago, in a little country far, far away called Japan, there was a boy that was born into a small town in Shikoku, uh, in Kochi. Uh, same prefecture as this, but he was on the coast. I'm in the mountains now. And he was a fisherman. Family was not very wealthy, not very well off. He was working at, you know, 12 years old. He was a fisherman. And this was a long before uh, Japan was an open country. And back then, the punishment for leaving Japan or basically coming into Japan if you were a foreigner was death. So they were freaked out about, uh, you know, Foreigners weren't even a thing here, but the idea of them were scary. They, they, they thought them to be like barbarians or, you know, maybe that was just what the government told them to, you know, help keep the country closed or whatever. I don't know. Okay, I'm going to turn right 600 meters. And um, so these guys go fishing and they go fishing way off. You know, it's not like they're just, you know, fishing off the pier. They got a fishing boat, crappy little ancient Japanese fishing boat. And they get pretty far up from Japan and there's a storm and their ship gets wrecked. And they get washed up on an island even further away from Japan. Uh, can you imagine if I just kicked that guy off? Poof. Head north. In 200 meters, turn right. So, <clears throat> um, they're starving to death. I think there's three guys that survived. I don't know how many were on the boat in the first place, but three guys survived. And uh, what do you know what? A big old high-tech American whaling ship just kind of rolls up and they're like, help, notice me. Turn right, Okay. <laughs> sharp right. Oh, fuck, that was my turn. I should be noticing my navy, not this stupid story. So, uh, the Americans pick them up and they're on a big long fishing, <laughs> fishing, whaling trip and they don't just go Sharp whaling willy-nilly. <clears throat> they are on like, I would call it more of an expedition. So they're up for months more, even after they pick up these guys. two guys they're older and they're not picking up English very well and they're just generally like skeptical and they think the Americans are out to get them but I mean I think they, they come around eventually but the, the young boy John he was really impressionable started picking up English from the crew and they and they were working on the ship too because they're not just getting a free cruise the captain puts them to work but the captain likes John and uh, kind of starts raising him up like a son And, uh, yeah, so he, eventually the two guys, they're like, hey, just let up, they, they, they like roll up on Hawaii, and, uh, the, the two other Japanese guys are like, hey, I think this is our stop, let's just get off here. And I guess that's the birth of Japanese people being crazy about Hawaii. They're the first tourists from Japan to Hawaii. And God knows they wouldn't be the last. So, <clears throat> John's like, you know, the captain's like, hey, hey, Sonny, why don't you come back to Massachusetts and learn about English and learn about how to be a whaling boat captain? And John's like, hi. So, so John, goes, John goes back to Massachusetts and the captain pays for him to get a great education. You know, like, even, like captain, captain of a ship, that's a pretty high, that's, a, that's like being a doctor or, you know, like an airline pilot. And like, it's kind of a high status job. So he's got lots of money. And he's basically going to put John on the same career path. And John goes to school and he learns English. And, you know, he was, I don't know how his education was in Japan. But, you know, he was only 10 or 11 years old. 12, 13, 14, 15, I don't know. But he wasn't very old. You know, not enough time to, like, really learn, like, all how to write 
everything properly and stuff. I don't even know if he knew how to write at all. But now he's got like a full-on American education from a great school. Eventually, um, I, I think he goes out a time or two more on some whaling trips and eventually he gets some money and he saves up some and gets a boat. I don't know if he buys his own whaling ship or if he just bought like a little tugboat to hook onto the whaling ship, but he's like, he's kind of, he wants to go back to Japan. So he gets back on, he goes back to Japan. Uh, I don't, I don't, I don't remember exactly. I think he knew it was a dumb idea to go back to Japan, but he went back anyways. And, uh, you know, you, <coughs> he kind of starts roll, rowing into Japanese waters. And these Japanese guys are like, hey, who's the weird Japanese guy? With it? So they go over and investigate, and he's all suspicious. So, like, he doesn't speak Japanese very well anymore. His boat's weird, you know, like, he's just, you know, like, yeah, yeah, you're going to jail, you freaking gaijin. So, um, but of course, like, it's unusual. So, kind of this news works its way up the command chain, and... John gets an audience with some higher ups. I think even the emperor at one point, and he's like drawing pictures of the emperor, showing like all the crazy ass technology that America has. You know, steam engines and uh, you know the way they build their boats and everything. I think also John learned how to make barrels. He's a kind of like a block. He was a kind of a, a blacksmith's apprentice too for a while. So he's got he's got some great uh, training. It's kind of beyond Japan's technology at this point. And uh, they're like, okay, cool, 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 cool. You go to jail. So they take him to jail and he's like in there for like at least a year. He's in there for a long time. And then what do you know it? Captain Perry sails into Japan and he's like, bang, 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 open up. And Japan's like, no. And John, Captain Perry's like, hey, we're going to kick the doors in. And Japan's like, oh, okay, 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 we'll let you in. So, but nobody speaks English, right? But our boy John in prison does, and people remember the whole story that he said, you know, John kind of told the story of how he was in America, and they're like, hey, we could use this guy. So they grab John out of prison, and he helps translate, and he's kind of like a kind of ambassador between Captain Perry and, uh, and Japan. And I, I don't know to what extent, but definitely, he definitely helped everything go so much smoother. And, uh, by the way, I read about all this in a middle school reading level book called Heart of the Samurai. Dumbest name of a book I've ever heard. But it was recommended to me by one of my students, and I was, and I was in the hospital with a broken leg. So she let me borrow it, I read a book that was really good, despite it being a really easy book to read. I recommend it if you're interested in this. If not, definitely read his Wikipedia because it's a really interesting story. So, in Japan, you can't, you're either, if you're a samurai, you were born into it, like your dad was or your dad's dad was. You don't just all be like, hey, you know, like, I don't know if I want to be a doctor or if I want to be a samurai. And then, like, you choose, you go to college and you, you got a major to be a samurai. That's not how it works in Japan. So, it's like, it's like part of your lineage. But um, Japan gave him the honor of becoming a samurai after um, he wasn't born into it. So that was a really high honor. So there's this, so this boy, he like leaves Japan as this like 12 year old boy and he comes back into town, probably on some badass samurai horse. And he comes back into town as a samurai. He's like the coolest guy in town now. And he just slayed that pussy for the rest of his life. That's the end. That's the story of John Mung, John Manjiro. Um, if I come back through Shikoku on my way home, I'm going to stop by the museum and stop by his original house. But I don't know. I, I'm not so into history, especially Japanese history. A lot of it goes over my head. But that was a really interesting story. Japan, as we know it today, probably would not be like it is if it wasn't for this guy. If, uh, if you live in Massachusetts or somewhere near, uh, I'm sure there's a, uh, he's got a museum over there as well. And I think uh, that town and 
this town are sister cities now because of this whole thing and there's a whole it like basically brought Japan and America together from way back so that's the story hope you liked it I'm gonna keep riding my motorcycle <laughs> bye bye